Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're tackling Leet Code Problem 2071, Maximum Number of Tasks You Can Assign. It sounds a bit like a resource allocation puzzle, and it kinda is. We'll break down the problem and figure out an efficient way to solve it. Let's dive in. Alright, so what's the goal here? We have a list of tasks, each needing a certain strength to complete. We also have a list of workers, each with their own strength level. A worker can only do a task if their strength is greater than or equal to the task's requirement. But, there's a twist. We have a limited number of magical pills. Giving a pill to a worker permanently increases their strength by a fixed amount. Each worker can get at most one pill. Our job is to find the maximum number of tasks we can possibly get done by assigning workers to tasks, using the pills wisely. We want to maximize K, the number of completed tasks. Let's look at the first example. We have tasks needing strengths 3, 2, and 1. Our workers have strengths 0, 3, and 3. We have one pill that adds one strength point. Can we do all three tasks? Let's see. Maybe we give the pill to the weakest worker, worker 0. Their strength goes from 0 to 1. Now, they can handle the easiest task, the one needing strength, 1. Okay. What about the task needing strength 2? We have two workers left both with strength 3, either can do it. Let's say worker 1 takes it. Finally, the hardest task needs strength 3. Worker 2 also has strength 3, so they can handle it. Perfect. We managed to assign all three tasks, so the answer is 3. Okay, so how do we approach this generally? My first thought might be, maybe we should try to assign the easiest tasks first, or maybe the hardest ones. Should we match the weakest workers to the easy tasks? or save strong workers for hard tasks. The pills really complicate things, because a weak worker could potentially handle a harder task with a pill. Just trying every possible way to pick, say, tasks and workers and figure out pills, that sounds like it would explode in possibilities very quickly. We probably need a more structured approach. Here's a key observation. If we figure out a way to complete, say, five tasks, we can definitely complete four tasks, right? We just pick 4 out of the 5 assignments we already found. This property, where if a number works, then all numbers smaller than also work, is called monotonicity. Whenever you see this, it's a huge hint that we can use binary search. Instead of checking k equals 1, then 2, then 3, we can binary search on the possible number of tasks, from 0, up to the minimum of the number of tasks or workers available. So the core of our binary search will be a helper function, let's call it check k. This function answers the question, is it possible to complete exactly tasks? If we can answer this efficiently, the binary search will find the maximum for us. Now, if we're trying to complete tasks, which should we aim for? It makes sense to try and complete the easiest tasks. If we can't even manage those, we definitely can't manage any set of tasks that includes harder ones. Similarly, which workers should we use? To maximize our chances, we should use the strongest workers available. Okay. So Chek and Zike needs to see if the strongest workers can handle the easiest tasks, potentially using pills. How do we actually perform the check for a given? We need a smart assignment strategy. First, let's sort both the tasks and the workers by strength. This makes things much easier. We'll focus on the easiest tasks and the strongest workers. Now here's a greedy approach that works. Let's process the easiest tasks, but start from the hardest of those tasks and go downwards. For the current task, we first look for the strongest available worker among our top who can do this task without a pill. If we find one, great, assign them. This saves our precious pills for potentially harder situations. If no worker is strong enough on their own, then we must consider using a pill. We look for the weakest worker, again, among our top still available, who could do the task if they used a pill. If we find one and we still have pills left, we assign them, use up one pill, and carry on. If we can't find any suitable worker, either with or without a pill, then it's impossible to complete these tasks, and our check function fails, returns false. If we manage to assign all tasks this way, the check succeeds, returns true. Using a data structure like a multiset or assorted deque helps find these workers efficiently. So putting it together, the main function sets up the binary search. It sorts the tasks and workers first. The search space for the number of tasks goes from zero up to the minimum of the number of tasks and the number of workers we have. Inside the loop, we calculate the middle value for a check function with this. If check2 returns true, it means we can complete tasks. Great, 
so we store as a potential answer and try to aim higher by moving the lower bound of our search up. If check trace false, then tasks is too many, and we need to aim lower by moving the upper bound down. Eventually the loop finishes, and the last successful we found is our maximum. Now let's look closer at the check function itself. It takes the lists, pills and strength. It selects the strongest workers and puts them into a double-ended queue or deckway. This lets us easily grab the strongest from the right end, or the weakest from the left end, in constant time. We also keep track of pills remaining. Then we loop through the easiest tasks, starting from the hardest one, index K1, down to the easiest, index 0. For each task, first, we check if the strongest available worker, at the end of the decade, can handle it without a pill. If yes, pop them from the decade, task assigned. If not, we check if the weakest available worker, at the start of the decade, could handle it with a pill, and if we have pills left. If yes, we use a pill, decrement our pill count, and pop that weakest worker from the left of the deckway, task assigned. If neither of those options works, then we're stuck. We can't assign this task, so we immediately return false, tasks aren't possible. If we get through the whole loop without returning false, it means we successfully assigned all tasks, so we return true. So how efficient is this whole approach? First we sort the tasks and workers, that takes about n log n time for tasks and m log m time for workers. Then we do a binary search. The number of steps in the binary search is logarithmic, based on the number of possible tasks, so roughly log k, where k is min, n, comma can m. Inside each step of the binary search, we run our check function. The check function iterates through tasks. Using the deckway, finding and removing workers takes roughly constant time on average. So the check function takes about order k time or maybe order m, if you consider initializing the deckway from the slice. Multiplying the binary search steps by the work done in each step, the total time complexity is dominated by the initial sorting and the checks within the binary search loop. It's roughly in the ballpark of big O of m log m plus n log n plus maybe m times log k. It's much much better than trying all combinations. The extra space we use is mainly for storing the workers in the decay during the check, which is about order m or order k space. Alright, let's quickly recap the main points. We needed to find the maximum number of tasks we could assign. The key insight was noticing the if k tasks work, then k1 tasks also work property which led us straight to using binary search on the number of tasks. The heart of the solution became the check k function, which determines if a specific number tasks is achievable. For this check, we focused on the easiest tasks and the strongest workers. The winning strategy inside check was a greedy one. Process the tasks from hardest of the turnk to easiest. Try to use a worker without a pill first, the strongest available. If that's not possible, then consider using a pill on the weakest worker who can do the job with the boost. Sorting and using something like a deckway made the check efficient. Hope that breakdown made sense and helped clarify the approach. Binary search combined with a clever greedy check is a powerful pattern. If this explanation was useful, please hit that like button, consider subscribing for more Leet Code walkthroughs, or leave a comment if you have any questions or alternative ideas. And hey, if you're feeling extra supportive, the Boba Fund is always appreciated. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.